When Alfa Romeo invited me out here to review this, the all new Tonale, it was mixed feelings. You see, you do a little bit of research, you just go on the internet a tiny bit, and you will see that this thing shares a platform with a Jeep compass. Not very befitting of a luxurious brand like Alfa Romeo, but don't sweat. It's, it's not like that. This thing is unbelievably good in a lot of ways, but does have some deficiencies in some other places, which of course we will return to in this video. This one here is the Veloce trim. It comes in two trims, TI and Veloce, and it comes in at a really, really good price. Just under $50,000 this thing starts from, which is absolutely fantastic. It's about $10,000 less than a BMW X1 base model. And that thing is at the top of the class. So. For 10 grand less, you can get yourself one of these bad boys. Pretty good deal. In this review, we're gonna take a look at the exterior of the Tonale. We're gonna go and check out the interior. What's a new? Because there are huge changes. We're gonna see its practicality, take this thing for a drive and performance test. We're gonna see how quick it will go from zero to 100 kilometers an hour. And of course, I will give you my final thoughts on whether or not you should buy one of these, especially over the BMW X1, that class leader. As always, if you are new to the channel, please do subscribe. It really helps the channel out. Let's get into the review. It would be frankly illegal of me to review the Tonale and not talk about its design because in my opinion, that is the number one selling feature of this car. It's the fact that this thing is the sexiest inanimate object in the world. I love it. And what they've done here is they've gone back to the old Alpha DNA. I know, very cliche, but it really has. You got the three plus three lights here. That's made a comeback. These are actually matrix LEDs, so super bright, and they blank out part of their beams. I love how the uh, number plate is offset to the left. Very Alpha as well. Look at this grill. It's the shield here, and it's not too big. It's not like the uh, BMW kidney grills that just take up the entirety of the front. I love the Montreal green paint we have here. Frankly, if you don't get this, I'd be a Amazed. This is what really excites me though. We have the, the telephone wheels. Doesn't it look like the old dials that you get on the telephones? Whatever it is, it's fantastic. These things here are 19 inch wheels. You'll see that they've got big brakes on them. Apparently they have Brembo's. So that's, uh, that's something new on a hybrid car. I think that's a first. Also wrapped in Goodyear Eagle F1 tires, which actually are pretty good. Veloce badge here is blacked out. I love this little Italian flag detail on the mirror. You got some Gray contrasting stuff there. Keyless entry, of course, and go on the Veloce. You also get this tinted privacy glass. The back though, the back is what I wanna smack because frankly, this thing is stunning. Check out these tail lights. Again, three plus three. It's got a beautiful LED light bar design. And also the shield comes to the back as well. You can see this really tinted rear window actually comes to a point right there. So. Definitely a lot of attention has been given to this thing not looking like its brother, the Dodge Hornet, as, as this is Alfa Romeo, and Alfa Romeo is owned by Stellantis, who owns Dodge. But they also own Maserati, so maybe it's got Maserati influence as well. I don't know. Let's check out the interior. Okay, so coming into the interior now of the Tonale, and it is a little bit of a mixed bag. This is where you can see that they've saved a little bit of costs. Not because of the design, it's actually really nicely designed. It's the quality of the materials. You don't have to go very far to find scratchy materials. You've got leather-ish materials, but it feels much more plastic than leather. Look, it's uh, certainly not a luxurious place to be, but I would say it's definitely in that upper echelon of premium. And then there's just attention to detail that is fantastic. I really like this new 10-inch display. It's super responsive. It uses Android Automotive. You're gonna find this system across a lot of Stellantis products. So you'd find that in a Maserati MC20 for those who care. It just works really well, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And of course that goes well with the wireless charger there. Also only the heated seats and steering wheel have been relegated to the screen. You have physical controls here. Awesome, awesome to see, because that is leaving cars for whatever reason. Probably the worst automotive trend. Up in front of you, you get a 12 inch TFT display and it is a really high quality display. It shows plenty of information. It looks fantastic. Better yet though, in my opinion, is the steering wheel. It feels so good. They call it sports leather, whatever that means, but it does have the start stop button here like you would expect in an Alpha. I love the Alpha badge, better of all though. Metal, metal, metal shifters, listen to that as unreal. 
it is a really premium place to be sitting. And if you're not touching the materials around, you're probably gonna be pretty happy. Kind of like with these seats, they're fantastic here in the Veloce. Get them into a really good position. And I love how Alfa Romeo is embossed them to the top of the headrest. That's all very cool. Got a little Italian flag there as well. You really do feel like you're sitting in Venice when you're sitting inside this car. Oh, look at this. It slides there as well. And build quality in general is super duper solid. Like listen to this. It's very well built, which could not be said of Alphas in the past. I'm really, really impressed. But let's check out the back seats. Okay, so back seats of the Tonale. Look, it's a little disappointing. I'm but a short king at five foot 11. I don't have a huge amount of leg room. Toe room is really good though, and headroom as well is very good. And to be fair, I do sit weirdly far back. I will say though, it's a bit of a letdown that you get scratchy materials in the back seats. I would have expected a little bit more from it than that, but whatever, you can't win everything. You do get a USB-C port and a USB-A port though back here. You've also got vents back here, which is nice. And these seats extend really far out. So I get a lot of leg support, which I really appreciate. Another slightly weird thing is that this armrest is like really wide. So even though it's very easy to rest your arm on it, it does actually eat into a little bit of your leg space. It's not the best in the back of the Tonale. And if you wanna see a car that is just a little bit better, go check out the BMW X1 review that we did at the launch. This is pretty good though. It's, it's acceptable, especially 10 grand less acceptable. Let's talk about practicality. We couldn't review a family SUV without talking about how much you can fit in its bum. So power tailgate, naturally, it is a luxury car after all. It's actually really impressive. 500 liters of boot space. When the plug-in hybrid does come later in the year, you can expect that to drop quite significantly to about 350, but we don't care about that because that's not this. The hybrid is really good. It's essentially exactly the same as what you'd find in an X1, so I wonder who uh, Alpha has benchmarked for that one. The only gripe I have is you can't just press the button and let it close. You have to hold it for, you can, sorry, you can't hold it for three seconds. Oh no, you can, you have to. And then it takes forever to close. It's just dumb. Let's drive this thing. All right, so driving the Tonale, of course, we're gonna give it quite a lot of twisty sauce because one of the things that they really harped on about is the fact that this thing handles incredibly well. And at first I was like, it's a front wheel drive hybrid uh, small SUV. And you're telling me that it uh, handles well. That is very PR speak for it's okay. But actually, <laughs> it's pretty amazing. And it's not just amazing because it's based on a Jeep Renegade platform, which uh, let's be honest, is not the most exciting sounding thing ever. But here in this Veloce spec, we do get adaptive dampers. It's two stage. So when we change the car into D, for I think dynamic, the steering really stiffens up and it's really well tuned. So when you turn it, it goes exactly where you point it. Now powering the Tonale is a 1.5 litre four cylinder turbo petrol engine. On its own, it's not that impressive. You have 118 kilowatt of power, 240 newt meters of torque. It's interesting because they call this a mild hybrid, but it seriously acts more like a hybrid than it does a mild hybrid. It's it's only a 48 volt system and it uses a 0.8 kilowatt hour battery. Very, very small. It actually sits underneath the transmission tunnel and it only delivers 15 kilowatt of power. So really not great under ideal conditions, mind you. However, it does add 135 Newton meters of torque. That is insane. And so when you put the car, for example, into a, which is something stupid I'll put up on the screen now, you can see the engine has turned off and when we coast, we coast without the engine. And then if we get the right menu in the center, you can see here that when we're going down a hill, we have regenerative braking. And when we accelerate, it just boosts a little bit using that motor system, just like a hybrid, you can see it right there. But eventually the engine will kick back on and we give it some juice and you can see them working in tandem. And actually, this thing shifts pretty well. We'll do some performance testing in a moment, but it's impressive. More impressive is the fact that this thing is based on a bloody Jeep Renegade, one of the most boring cars ever. You would have no idea because what Alpha engineers have done is insane. We just put the car into D. You can see here that the suspension stiffens up. We put our foot down, gives us maximum response from the engine. And you might notice that I'm taking these corners 
pretty damn hard and I can because this thing has an ELSD with torque vectoring. So you put your foot down around a corner and you feel like you have so much confidence. It's unreal. I'm really impressed. So what are the downsides? Well, it's the seven speed dual clutch. It's really not the greatest. You know, you put the car into manual mode, which by the way, it won't stay in manual mode. You downshift, it takes a second and then it will just upshift itself anyway. So if you wanna have like a lot of spirited driving, this seven speed dual clutch is not going to really do it for you. When you come to a stop, it's fine. It doesn't like lurch off the line. These Brembo brakes, by the way, are very good. But you know, you put your foot down. It's not too bad. It takes a second to respond. But this seven speed dual clutch is definitely not as good as the seven speed dual clutch you will find in the BMW X1 just how it is. And fuel economy is uh, not the best. You can see here that we're getting 8.9 liters per 100 kilometers over about 1500 kilometers of this car's life. So yeah, it's not gonna knock your socks off in terms of its hybrid prowess anyway, and it definitely performs better in town because you can get that electric motor to go officially 15 kilometers an hour on EV only. But in my actual tests, I've been able to go 40 kilometers an hour from zero using just EV power. So that's where that battery is gonna do best. And it's where you're probably gonna get the best fuel economy. But it's so much fun. I couldn't believe it. The steering gets really heavy and dynamic, just how you want it. When you do have it in normal, it becomes a little bit too vague for my liking, but it's great for around town driving, that's for sure. But the fact that I can chuck it around these corners, give it a lot of sauce and have this much fun, I'm genuinely surprised. Oh, back end rotated out. One of the things it does let you do when you're in dynamic mode is it allows a little bit more slippage. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. And my God, these roads are beautiful. I'm really impressed with how this thing drives, but what will it do zero to hundred? Let's test that out. Okay, so I've claimed that this thing will do zero to hundred in about 8.8 .8 seconds from memory. Let's see what it can do on a admittedly damp day. We have our specialist timing gear here. So we're gonna use satellites to be able to tell exactly how fast this car will go. Sadly, no launch control in this thing. Not really surprising. Let's see what it will do. Okay, here we go. Took a second to react. Bit of torque steer there. It's got quite a lot of power. Doing okay though. Hmm, zero to 100 in 9.07 seconds. Not too bad. Okay, so final thoughts on the Alfa Romeo Tonale. Look, I really, really like this thing. In fact, I would go so far as to say that this is, well, it could be considered almost class leading at its price point. Being $10,000 cheaper, spec for spec with a BMW X1, which admittedly does feel more luxurious, is very impressive. When you combine that with the mild hybrid powertrain, which is more hybrid than mild, I think that this thing is an absolute winner. But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section, just below that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. I'd love to have you around. Click over there if you wanna watch our BMW X1 review and something else that I will think about later. And over there is financing. So if you need best financing, you know what to do. Ciao for now.